What up? This is Escape Velocity. I'm Crypto Pio. I'm here with my man, Jaycoin, and we're going to do an NFT freestyle. What up, Jaycoin? What up? Glad to be here. Rainy Sundays. Let's talk about some nifties. Let's talk about it. So what's on your mind? What do you want to talk about? All right. So I think la so late last night, right before I, I went to bed, a couple of things that, that happened. One, the SNL skit came out about NFTs, which was just hysterical. It's Pete Davidson dress up as Slim Shady, rapping about NFTs. He really says nothing of substance. But then all the way at the end of the video, I actually think they give like what is a really simple, easy to understand description of NFTs. They do it in rap form. But it's the first time I think this has really been brought to the masses. Like, no way I thought that this would make it on to SNL so quickly. So this is really cool to see. I feel like they're late because I feel like they could have done this last week, but you know, they're probably always going to be late because they're part of the corporate media. But um, yeah, Jack Harlow comes through and gives an, uh, an explanation. Kate uh, is playing Janet Yellen right here, which is hysterical. <laughs> we um, got Morpheus in there offering, offering to sell everyone pills. <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay. So yeah. So, I mean, we're seeing NFTs become more and more mainstream. I think this NS SNL thing is a major bullish signal. So you know, I talk about this in a few videos. You and me have talked about it before. The NFT market at this point moves one to one with Ethereum. And mm -hmm. the understanding everyone has is that, you know, well, and then the Ethereum market moves with Bitcoin. And the mm -hmm. idea is that this is the post having bull run this year. It's going to peak in September, October, November. So I think it's fair to say that NFTs are going to go up and to the right at a macro level until the end of the year. And then mm -hmm. once the dump happens, everyone's going to say that they were a fad that, you know, that was fun while it lasted, blah, blah, blah. And then what we'll idiots, <laughs> yep. what idiots, yeah, all that. And then we'll recoup it in the next bull run, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. I think the, the only difference I see is um, what's unique about NFTs that is less unique about cryptocurrency is because there are a lot of different NFTs and tons of different artists. Some of these are going to hold their value in the exact same way through that entire dump, right? Whereas when cryptocurrency, the prices start to decrease, they happen all at once and it happens across the board. I think that'll happen here, but I think that there's going to be some pieces, people pop really good example of that where those prices aren't going to go anywhere. I really just don't expect those to all of a sudden fall from the sky. Uh, but for 99% of the market, and this is what Gary Vee says all the time too, like that will happen. Um, so then it's just a game of who can hold on the longest. <laughs> I know I can hold, but yeah, you're right. Like, cause people in, in pack now are essentially crossover artists in right. the sense that they're not NFT artists anymore. They're just artists. Um, right. They're just artists. More. Right. So, so did you look at this one? The open editions from the Jose Delbo drop? I, I saw it. I saw it. And Delbo has been both a phenomenal artist, but also somebody who has really interacted with the community. So he shares like original sketches and original designs of all of these pieces. What I haven't seen though is what the floor is of this. Like what's happened post drop? The last sale was 970. The highest bid is 785. The drop price was 750. So it's not looking like it's, it's performing doing pretty good. poorly. Yeah. And the floor, it's doing pretty Nifty, good. Gateway, Nifty Gateway's website has been barbecued where, okay, but you can still buy it for 969. But yeah, it does look like it's doing pretty well. Nifty Gateway's site has been, you know, messing up. So I can't like sort it properly by lowest price, but it looks like 969 is a safe bet for the lowest price, which mm -hmm. I think is fine. There weren't that many mints. The, I mean, of course, this edition size is wrong, but I think it was I think it's at 300. Mints. Yeah, I think it's at 300. What's cool about his pieces, though, too, is like if you look at his first um, his first Nifty Gateway drop, it's nothing like this. Nothing at yeah. all. It's it's more of a fine sketch is how I would describe it. Like, I mean, it has nothing to do with this style. And so it's kind of interesting to see how all over the map. Yeah, exactly. Heroes, heroes playing poker. Like these two things just don't resemble each other at all to me which i think is pretty cool to see a lot of the other artists have pretty consistent styles i think pack is a really good example of that even people in a lot of ways like despite the different imagery there's always a pretty consistent style to all of those pieces all of his stuff is just his stuff is just crazy just rocket yep. ships yep yep yeah it's been interesting to see and you start to see some of these like more limited edition pieces really start to pick up steam after one big purchase I saw the other day, Rhymes Like Dimes, one of our 
favorite artists, somebody we talk about a lot, Slime Swing and, and, um, and a couple of other pieces, but his Mac Miller piece just sold for over 70K recently. Someone picked it up on the marketplace for 70K, which it just validates these artists, right? And then it takes all of those limited edition pieces that they have and multiplies the price by five or 10 times, which is so wild. Yeah, let's bring it up. Let's look at it. That's crazy. So I want to see the floor on this. I made a video about Slime Swing last week, and it looks like the performance is still very stagnant. Probably because it it's a high mint count. 536 Slime Swings minted, 636 franchise carousels minted. So that's great for the artist at first. That means yep. that Rhymes Like Dimes made a lot of money. I get the market cap on this Rhymes Like Dimes drop between the open editions and the auction of Mac Miller is probably in the ballpark then of he generated like 1.5 million bucks because this is yep. 636 times a thousand and this is 536 times a thousand. And one of them was actually more than a thousand at drop. It was. 1100 or something mm -hmm. so that's insane he it's a it's a mold it's yeah. a seven figure drop and it's not performing well but at the end of the day like it's going to pick back up i think he's going to drop in early april he's a huge artist too if you look on twitter and you really start to look into it what you start to see is that there's a ton of other people who talk about rhymes like dimes and how prevalent in both the physical art community and just the 3D design space that he actually is. Um, and it was cool to see, right? Like you see these artists come out and say, like, I finally feel validated for all the work that I've done. I mean, yeah, he's had 360,000 followers. Like, you know, this is no chump. <laughs> yeah, he, he's no chump. His stuff's also super cool. Like you got Anderson yeah. Pack right here. This is, uh, mm -hmm. what's his name? Um, Schoolboy Q. Yeah. He does awesome, a ton of it's... Tyler, the creator stuff too. That's sick. I mean, I like all of his stuff. I wanted to buy both of his pieces on Nifty Gateway at drop, but I elected not to. Fun fact, this this drop was the same day as VNV, Victor and Victoria by Ferocious. And I think that this distracted me from Victor and Victoria. I ended Probably. up not buying any anything. This drop cratered you know, on the secondary market because of the influx of open editions that Nifty Gateway was putting out there. As a result, I bought Slime Swing for 700 bucks, which is hilarious because that's so Crazy. cheap. I didn't buy Victor and Victoria. It's been an absolute rocket ship. I talked about that on a different video. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that this is definitely a really good potential long-term hold. Yeah. And that's what we start to see, right? It's like, how does the, how does the consolidation work to a couple of artists that are going to going to weather the storm, right? You see Trevor Jones with his Discord channel now talking all about how if you can hold these Bitcoin angels for four months, six months time frame, all of a sudden you end up in this position where something large might happen in his career. And I think that's what he's trying to signal is like what you're really holding is a piece of my career. And so if you believe that my career as an artist will increase, like should really hold on to this thing. Uh, and that's what he says all the time, right? And, and he even put out in Discord, if you actually join the community as somebody who owns one of his pieces of art, he put out a really, really long, thoughtful post last night about how he doesn't want to do anything impulsively to influence the price of Bitcoin Angel. He doesn't want to make any rash decisions, but instead just wants to encourage everyone not to sell them. And the, less, the, the more that he can encourage people to hold on to them, the more that he believes the value will continue to go up. That's for sure. And that's also like um, a parallel with the traditional art world. Like artists don't like it when their art gets sold on like the secondary market. I think they feel like it makes it, it just takes away from the piece. You hear when you uh, hear about the traditional art world, like that people don't want to sell to certain collectors because they're like, oh, he's he or she is going to sell my stuff. So that's totally, right. you know, relevant. Um, Trevor Ar Ar already also did something like that where he bought up all the sub $1,000 Bitcoin angels. So he He's kind of already done that, yep. you know, post drop uh, pump, so to speak, on Bitcoin Angel. Just a little side note. This is Trevor Jones quoting my tweet right here in the past 24 hours. No big deal. You know, <laughs> knows what what up? <laughs> this is the fun part of the market, though, right? Like you get to interact with the artists like you can put something out on Twitter or somewhere like that and actually interact with them. You could talk to Trevor Jones in Discord, Like you could have an actual conversation with the guy, which is totally crazy to me. And that's the fun part. What's going on here with Dot Pigeon? What's he talking about these days? Oh. Interacting with Greg Mike. 
Of course he is. And you know, what's so funny is they always pop into discord and talk about things. I think what we have to talk about at some point is this big burn that's going to happen for all the faces pieces, but actually sure. one of the most interesting piece parts of the whole story. Um, and we'll, we'll tell a little bit about it in a second, but what's, what's interesting about the whole story is that Brie Lau and slime Sunday, the artist of this piece, obviously super popular Blau. in the NFT space. Blau Blau. And slime Sunday. <laughs> wow. They, they, um, they actually went into discord last night and discussed how the burn should work with the entire discord community. So the whole community got to decide, how are we going to structure this? How is this going to work? What should the message on Twitter actually look like? And then they put that out, which is pretty crazy. It's awesome because, you know, the fact that this had 5,000 edition or closing in on 5,000, you know, I think that there's a supply shock in that way. And so their decision to do this, and I feel like they probably already had this in mind because the piece is called Faces and he's calling the burn Melt Faces. So yep. that works out so well. It, it just, it had to have been planned. So I think that that this has been a long-term kind of idea for them, which is no surprise since they're probably the most successful tandem in nfts they've mm -hmm. done a ton of drops this drop generated a ton of money five thousand mints at 333 and there were three other open editions in the drop for three thousand six thousand and ten thousand so i i could calculate the market cap on this but it's definitely a lot um and so what this b melt thing is is it's building hype around the piece which is yep. awesome that we've seen it with Bitcoin Angel building hype around the piece. Just saw it with, with Kill the Wabbit too. It's creating scarcity of the piece because you're literally right. burning editions of the piece. A lot of editions, by the way. A he lot. Uh, we, were, we were talking about it and Blau could have taken the easy way out. And because it's the 333 army, it's all about three. He could have said, you have to burn three of them to get this one of one. But no, he said, you have to burn six. So yep. literally six are disappearing at a time. The people that burn six faces are getting rewarded with a one yep. of one, which is, or I guess just like a limited edition. A limited edition. That, yep. Yep. That, that you can't buy. So there you go. You're getting a reward that way. Six faces are coming off the market. It's creating a scramble Insane. to buy more. Yep. And, and I just feel like it's going to add to the story of faces and that you're going to see more of this in years to come. And who knows what the final mint count of faces is. I'm going to be holding my faces. I own two. I, in my head, I wanted to buy three. Cause I was like, I feel like having three faces is going to be relevant. I should have double or triple down. I should say when I dropped the video on Thursday, I didn't, uh, but you know, it's, it's cool. I'm just going to hold my two and it'll be really interesting to see long-term what they do with faces. One other detail we left out is if you burn, a copy of faces that enters mm -hmm. you into a drawing for a one of one exactly yeah so you end up in the drawing of the one of one and the more individual faces that you burn essentially the more lottery tickets that you're buying right so you can burn 50 of them and have 50 opportunities in that raffle to win yeah there's the shades that's what we're talking about well you got the shades on so i'm gonna put the shades on you know we're sophisticated it's sunny. our collectors it's sunny in new jersey dude. i gotta have my shades on otherwise i can't see um but the uh, the faces piece is crazy, and I think I think part of this is, is um, it was just shocking to see how quickly they both Slime Sunday two went into Discord and ran the tweet that they were about to post to tens of thousands of people by the Discord community saying, "What do you guys think? Any objections? Do you think any of this is wrong? Should we change anything?" Like, talk about engaging a massive community of purchasers and you're right like this is a piece that that did almost two million dollars in sales when it initially launched and on the secondary market it sold over two thousand times it's more popular than the bitcoin angel in terms of trading hands so that kind of stuff is crazy to me and i think i think i think the number of mints that actually get burned will be interesting to see but last night people were guessing in discord about how many did they think will be burned and it seems like the average consensus is that about 1500 to 2000 of them would be burned just based on assumptions of people in the nifty gateway discord but that would cut the supply in half so you have to imagine that if you cut the supply of this in half that there's going to be a pretty big run on these pieces which is really exciting that's crazy i didn't i didn't know that i didn't know that it was going to be 
that big of a burn. That's like 25 to 50% of the supply. And yeah, we didn't even mention that, that it's, it's firmly, it is comfortably the most popular piece yeah. on Nifty Gateway. And it's not going to get dethroned for quite some time. Like they architected this drop to be immaculate. Like everybody knew yep. that this was a super successful collaboration. Slime Sunday's pieces are all electric Wild. in terms of performance. He, he doesn't have a piece that doesn't perform at an exceptional level. I love mm -hmm. all his stuff i wish i owned more of it um and then they said that this is the last open edition that they're ever going to come up with yep. so that was a lot of hype and then they dropped it for 333 bucks so it's a super accessible price point it just lights out and then this just adds to it 2731 have been sold that Crazy. bodies the second place piece bitcoin angel which is obviously incredibly popular which bodies too. the third place piece <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, the, these two are going to hang out here for a while it'll be interesting to see what slips in to become the next top three i have to think something will replace Le anime unless i mean obviously you never know um but yeah i mean it's it's pretty crazy the fact that Le anime and genesis and you know lavish organically earned these spots just mm -hmm. speaks to how dope the pieces are mad dog jones he did a similar thing crash and burn where yep. and was this part of crash and burn i think um, it was i think oh no yes it's, it's not yeah so oh, it is it's part of crash and burn so that's what made so many sell exactly exactly so that's why the velocity of it picked up so much like the number that we're getting scooped up scooped up picked up so much so quickly and that's kind of thing like what might happen and if you leave your pieces up people were joking about it last night but if you leave your pieces up with somewhat low or what might be seen as a low price in this marketplace you might expect that they're not going to go anytime soon that there's not enough demand for these pieces and then all of a sudden an artist comes in says something like that and bang totally different ball game all of the pieces get swiped up right so it's just i mean the, the velocity at which these things can move is totally crazy Straight up. And based on what uh -oh. you just said, I just want to pull up this tweet. Trevor Jones, the artist of Bitcoin Angel, he, mm -hmm. uh, this is his birthday present, I guess. He listed Hackatow a while back for 152 yep. ETH. So I think that's Whoa. like 125 grand and yep. someone bought it. So he thought that this was safe. He thought, oh yeah, I'll just list it for 152 ETH. And someone was like, 125 grand? I'll take yeah, it. Yeah, sounds good to me. I'll, I'll scoop it up. Works. So it's like, you know, on one side, Trevor Jones is happy that he just literally made more money than a lot of people, like probably 90% of the world make in a year off of one sale of, of a, you know, a secondary sale of a piece. But I think he probably has like a certain, you know, the artist in him wanted to hold this, the collector in him just wanted to hold it. It's a hilarious piece. Hilarious. Absolutely hilarious piece. And honestly, like I totally see why somebody who just has unreal sums of money would throw a few hundred thousand dollars at this yeah sure no problem no problem take it trevor jones doesn't even know what hit him <laughs> akatow's been just electric absolutely mm -hmm. electric i mean yeah you have to like 12.99 an auction 12.99 what's going mm. on what's going on it was 400 500 like yesterday <laughs> yeah yeah. I mean, when I, when I put out the video a few days ago, it was like 450, 500. And I was thinking about buying more. I was thinking about just buying like five of them because there's, there was just no question to me when you hold this position, when this position is held, like literally faces has drawn a line in the sand and said, we are going to be the most popular, you know, Slime Sunday and Blau said, this piece is going to be the most popular piece on Nifty mm -hmm. Gateway for a long time. It's not going oh, to yeah. be dethroned by Bitcoin Angel. Something new would have to come in to dethrone it. And the fact that they just accelerated it with this promotion is nuts. So yeah, people are just gobbling this up. I can't wait to see what Faces is worth in like five years. They're going to keep doing stuff like this. Like it's, yeah. it's wild. They're going to make it so you have to own Faces to buy a drop. It's going to be crazy. Yep. yep. And to get into concerts and all kinds of things. Like there's going to be all kinds of ways to activate this. Right. And, and that's where it becomes fun. Like then all of a sudden you own an asset and you own something that's just plain fun. And the more fun that these things become, the more it'll draw in the kind of non-crypto person. Right, somebody who's not in here because they're really interested in non-fungible tokens, but rather is really interested in music and just thinks that this is a really cool way to interact with a really popular musician. Yeah, what is going on here with these pieces selling? This is crazy, man. Bucks? Is this by Mad Dog Jones? Look at that. 
ABV Gallery. I have no idea what this is, but it is awesome. But ABV Gallery, that's not the artist. Is this mm -hmm. Ness Graphics, I think, is the artist, home base. This is really cool. This when is did this really drop? cool. March 19th at a $1,500 price. Woo! It was an open Whew. edition? Wow, this is Maybe really not. cool. Maybe not Number open primary edition. sales 50. Yeah, I don't think so. This is why this is fun. Well, is every time I come onto this website, there's something that I didn't know about. Every single time. Physical NFT. Okay. 20, 20 oh, artists. Is this, this is from the Greg Mike yep. Uh, yep, it is. physical gallery in Atlanta. So this was on display. Here's Beige crushing yep. it as usual. A oh. render to Oh, wow. Look at this. Oh. Man, That's I wish dope. I could have gone there. Yeah, so it was a it was an addition of fifty drawing. So in other yep. words, I yep. mean, if you would have hit the the jackpot getting any of these, these are all sick. Wow. Yeah, Greg that Mike, bit Ness graphics. Gone deck sweet. and Greg Mike right here for two grand. Blake Catherine coming through. You already know. Wow. Wow. Look at that. Yeah, we got to check and on Blake was, Catherine real quick. There's fifty of each of those, huh? Wow. See, a uh, well drop Catherine. can do so well. Yeah, how's Blake Catherine doing? Here we go. So I got this. I'm selfish. 11.25 is the last sale. People are going to come around. I don't want to hear it. 888 That's awesome. owns, 888 owns double digit of this piece. So I'm not, I'm not worried about it. This is a forever nope. hold without question. Just hold on tight. Wait for these artists to become extremely famous. That's all that we're waiting for. And it's happening in real time right in front of us. Th that last sale of this 15 hours ago was bought by Blake Catherine, the artist. <laughs> and, and then the sale before it was bought by Sergito, who's a notable person in the NFT community. And then mm -hmm. Duncan Cock Foster went ahead yesterday and said, CEO, that he feels like gateway. Right, I'm going to make a video on this because look at the, like, these are Buyer interesting buyers. Unreal. Yep. These are interesting buyers. And then we have whales coming through chalky, JMT in the past week saying, you know what? I kind of like the price. Yeah, I like the price huh? at, at you know, twelve hundred bucks. JMT, I bought four of them. Sounds good. Who else we got? Yeah, I, I could see a bull run coming on on this piece. And then whoa, eight 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 on March seventeenth went dude, hard. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, just bought like ten of them. <laughs> yeah, he went hard. Yeah, this this one's gonna explode. <laughs> Unbelievable. Anything else you want to cover? We've done 23 minutes. Dude, I think the last thing is this this new drop that's coming up right now. I don't know anything about it. Pop back for me. This uh, The one in the middle. So the OG Esports is going to be really interesting. But Ron English, these are those pieces that I look at that I just think like, oh, man, these are going to take off, right? When you go down and you look, instead of Uncle Sam, it's Uncle Scam. So there's something there. Something there. I don't know what it is, but this is hysterical. Fat Tony. Fat, Fat Tony. Tony, dude. Like, this is hysterical. Uncle Scam with phone. Just sitting on a pile of money talking on his phone. Like, there's some Mona Lisa grin. I don't know, man. I don't know anything about this piece, but every time I come in here and I look at these things, I'm just like, oh, goodness. I'm going to enter this I want your up. wealth. I mean, this is, you know, and the fact that they're drawings, these are going to perform really, really well, two yep. hours. And, and so is there going to be an open edition from him? Maybe not. Or they don't, they don't like show it yet. Yeah. Head over to the drops page. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to see. Um, and they'll show the next two. So it looks like the only open editions. Go. He's got wow. these, which are a totally different style. Totally different style. Ronnie so, Rabbit. <laughs> all right. So so my gut on this is that yep. these are not going to perform well because here's why. They're yeah. $1,500 open editions. Mm -hmm. OG Esports is dropping a ton of stuff today too. Yeah. The, the drawings in, by English are going to be fire. I think yeah. for sure, but a $1,500 open edition is pretty bold. Okay. OG Esports and Josh Pierce. This is sick. Big day. These open editions are going to do well. I think, mm -hmm. I think these are, are a good buy for 750. Yep. For 750, a collab between Josh Pierce and OG Esports. You own a Josh Pierce. I do. Constellation, I believe it's called. Con yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. And so this is last week's drop. I was about to comment on it, but okay. Yeah. I love here real quick. I love the X copy drop. They're sweet. I love it. How's it perform? Absolutely love it. So I think it's performing or at least the most expensive piece is performing really well. Not well, that one, I mean, it costs 99 cents. So yeah, it's performing pretty well. This is my favorite one. No wow. question. Wow. 3,303. Uh, 200. 3333. Three, three, three. I know that's like a $600,000 market cap right there. What's the floor? If they'll let us see it. What do we go? Six grand floor. Six K. I think that's wow. fair. This piece is, is so sick. Yeah, it's amazing. That's amazing. Looks like chalk on a chalkboard. I Moving love it. chalk and on a chalkboard. For some reason, it reminds me of like when I was a kid in the 90s, the, the sort of like, I feel like we saw artwork just like this. I, I really like the way the eyes move. I like that chalky, grainy thing that you talked about. I love this piece. It's so sick. Soon enough, you'll be six grand into the piece holding it forever. <laughs> I can't, I, unfortunately, I can't do that right now. I'm hoping I'm in a position to do it. So Sergito came through three days ago and bought it for four grand. Smart. Yeah, look at this. Not that many secondary action. sales. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean. Yeah, 206. Right, well, let's call it. We're coming in under a half hour. Thanks, Jay Coin. This is Crushed a safe it. velocity. Crushed it. Yeah, I mean, let's not pat ourselves on the back too much. Dropping every day. You'll see more Jay Coin. Have a good one, y'all.